For this week, we're going to put a little bit of a pause on what we've been doing in AutoCAD, and we're going to start to discover how we can actually use AutoCAD with different types of programs and different programs. Now, what I have open here is Adobe Illustrator. Illustrator and AutoCAD essentially speak the same language. They're both vector-based programs, meaning that they use lines really well. So when we, when we do our line drawings, okay, oftentimes um, we work with them in Illustrator in order to do presentation techniques. So I have Illustrator open, and if you haven't used Illustrator before, it's a pretty intuitive program. Um, all of the Adobe programs have been developed to be used by visual thinkers and visual designers. So they don't make it very difficult in order to start to work quickly um, using visual cues with their programs. And you'll find that also if you've used Photoshop before or InDesign or other programs in the creative suites, they all tend to look alike. So again, what they do is they try to lessen that learning curve and make it easy for somebody to be able to pick up quickly on the program. Now, as I said, Adobe Illustrator and AutoCAD speak really well to each other because unlike Photoshop, which is a raster-based program, um, a raster-based program essentially uses pixels in order to um, you know, work through the, the, uh, whatever information it's using, okay, whatever file it's using. So theoretically, what Photoshop wants to do is whenever we work with fills or text or lines, you know, aka strokes, um, what Photoshop really wants to do is it wants to turn it into pixels, okay? And essentially the problem with that is that when it pixelates it, it essentially turns it into a line, you know, a, a nice strong line into a bunch of little um, pixels, essentially blurring it a little bit. So we tend to use a lot, um, or we tend to use, you know, Illustrator and AutoCAD um, for tasks su such as adding text, um, you know, adding any fills, adding any, um, you know, lines, you know, to our drawings. Um, but keep in mind, you know, there are some improvements on it. You know, Photoshop has developed its program in order to be able to create vectors, okay, and to export vectors into Photoshop, into, a, sorry, Illustrator um, and or AutoCAD, depending on how you translate the file. Um, but traditionally, we use programs that are vector-based in order to work with text and lines and fills. And so one of the tasks that we would do, you know, for this would be to add, you know, fills, hatches, um, you know, any type of that decorative look to, you know, a plan or elevations, for example. So as I noted, I'm an illustrator and because Illustrator is a vector-based program, I can actually open up an AutoCAD drawing right in Illustrator. So if I go to file and open and find my, um, drawing file, okay, uh, notice that I didn't, you know, import it, I can directly open up a DWG file, so all I did was go to file, open, and find my DWG file, and then it gets me to this point. And this point, what it's asking me is if I want to, you know, scale my drawing how I want to scale it, okay, if I want it to be an original size, um, or to scale to fit the artboard, or scale by 100%. Now, if we scale by 100%, meaning that we're working with, um, you know, a, a full-scale drawing, it can start to be a little bit programmatic. It's fine if it's something small, okay? AutoCAD and Illustrator are often used in conjunction with each other in order to do custom signage, in order to do custom hardware, you know, so on and so forth. You know, anything that really, you know, uh, you might laser cut, okay? Um, However, you know, if you have a full building, then it might not be the best way to go about it. And we'll also work with PDFs, which is a much more common way of, of working with um, AutoCAD. But to begin with, what I want to do is I want to start to introduce this to you and show you how you can actually bring a DWG file into Illustrator. So here you can see you can fit to the artboard. And I'm just going to hit OK. OK. And, um, you know, some basics of Illustrator is that you have your tools on the side here, you have your panels with more options on the right hand side. Um, if I want to zoom in and out, okay, um, using my scroll zooms it up and down, and if I hold my shift key down, remember, so, sorry, my spacebar key, it'll turn it into a pan, and I can click and I can pan the view of it. Um, there is a zoom tool, okay, so you can click on that zoom button or type in Z and you'll see that you have a magnifying glass essentially attached to it. 
Um, by default, you'll see the plus, which means if I click, it'll zoom in. If I hold down Alt, okay, that'll change that plus to a minus, and that'll allow me to zoom out, okay? And then I essentially can pan it to where I want to um, see it. So what you can see is that, yes, we did bring in our, our AutoCAD file, okay? And we did open our AutoCAD file. And if I click on this selection tool, okay, the black arrow, you can see that when I click on these lines that they're actually lines okay and that's again how these vector based programs work in that they're translating line for line okay and that's why illustrator and autocad work really well together so if i open up my layers panel you can see that the layers also come in as, in as well so one of the things that you can do you know when you start to work with autocad um, you know, AutoCAD drawings in Illustrator is, you know, you can turn your layers on and off, okay, by clicking on that little eye icon. And I can essentially select, in order to give it line weights, I can select all of my objects using my selection tools, which are, um, the main selection tool is the black arrow, okay, and then you have a direct selection tool, which is your white arrow. And what that does is if you have something that's a little bit pickier, okay, that you cannot um, select with the direct selection tool. So for example, you know, if I have a group, okay, that's uh, selected. So if I turn this into a group, okay, you can also uh, click on control G or object and group. If I have a group, okay, I can select all of it using the black arrow, okay, the selection tool. If I want to zoom in, and still maintain that group, okay? And sometimes what happens is that when you do bring in drawings into Illustrator, okay, um, it tends to group objects together. So um, even when you ungroup them, it still might, you know, tend to be grouped. Um, so when you use the direct selection tool, the white arrow, you can actually select little increments, okay? Individual lines, you know, it's individual objects, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, even if something is part of a larger group, um, uh, whether you made it or whether it just comes in like that. Okay, so the direction, the direct selection tool is a little bit pickier. Um, but what I can do is I can actually select all of these objects and I can go layer by layer and I can adjust the stroke and I can adjust the line color. So I can go to my stroke panel, okay, um, which is off to the side. Uh, under weight, I can give it a weight a line weight. Okay, you'll see that it's getting thicker or thinner as I choose my line weights. And again, you know, line weights are relative to each other. So you should start to work with this, set it up uh, so that you can start to work with a scale. If you want to work like this in Illustrator, there's another way of doing it, which we'll get into in a second. Um, you can adjust how the caps look on your lines. So for example, you know, if you zoom in, you might ha want to have a rounded cap versus, you know, a butt cap or a projecting cap, you know, again, it's just a, it's just playing around with it and seeing what it can do. Um, same with the corners and how you want to align your strokes, okay? This is also where you can create dash lines, and essentially the way that this is um, set up is that you set your dash and your gap and your dash and your gap, okay? We're not going to have any dash lines um, with this example, so I'm going to deselect that, okay? Um, and also it gives you the option for arrowheads, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It gives you a lot of options. To set the color of it, okay, if you go to the left-hand side, you'll see that with Illustrator, as opposed to Photoshop where they have a background and a foreground color, what Illustrator has is it has a stroke and a fill, okay? The stroke controls the color of the strokes or the lines. So if I click on this color, okay, or double-click on it, I can actually make those black lines red, okay? Um, and I can keep doing that, you know, and change the colors as I want to, okay? Now keep in mind this is different from AutoCAD and that this is actually what it's going to print out like, okay? We're not going to apply a CTB file. It's not going to have all black lines. Um, if it's blue, it's going to print out blue. So it might be useful for indicators, you know, if you're trying to map out something on top of a plan in order to get it to stand out graphically. Um, you know, again, it's up to the use. So to um, go back to the uh, original stroke color, okay, which is black, 
if I double click on that, okay, I can either type in, you know, the values for black, or I can go to my color swatches, and I can, you know, use a block, a black like this, or I can go to select my lines, and I can go to my color wheel, and I can click on either a swatch, okay, or a shade, or a color, okay, and it has none black and white as the default, okay, so there's a few ways that you can do this. Um, there's also a fill, and what the fill does, and we'll see, you know, that as we start to work with our pens and our fills, is it allows us to actually create, um, you know, like a, a, a fill on the inside of these lines. So where we have the stroke on the outside using closed objects. So for example, if I have a rectangle, I can adjust my stroke for the outside line. Okay, you'll see it's black. I can adjust the color of it. I can adjust the size of it. Okay, and then the blue is the fill on the inside. Okay, so I can change the color of the fill to be, you know, something else. I gotta, sorry, I have to select the object in order to apply those changes. Okay, however, if I don't want to fill, then there's a little, uh, the notation for none in Illustrator is this little box with a red line through it. Okay, and whatever is indicated in the fill here is going to be the color, and whatever is indicated in the stroke here is going to be the color of the stroke. So I can change that back to black, and you can easily change the colors that way. Okay, so to go through this, option, you know, this type of methodology, I would have to go through all of my layers and essentially turn them on and off, you know, select all of the objects, change the stroke weight, okay, change the stroke color to black, okay, and go through one by one. And, you know, if I have my layers on and off, I can see how they look relative to each other, and I can adjust, you know, maybe this is not enough of, um, you know, a contrast, what I can do is I can go back and adjust. So again, I'm going to, you know, turn off my walls. I can also do a control A to select all of my strokes and I can make it thinner. So that now when I turn my wall layer on, you'll see that there's a much greater difference between them. Okay. So a lot of it's back and forth. Um, you know, really it's, you know, about setting up your line weights in Illustrator so that you know, if you ever want to do this methodology, it gets easier and you actually have all your values set up for you. Okay, but this is a much more tedious process. And what we'll see in the next video is there's an easier process that we can do from AutoCAD using a PDF.